Hello my warriors, welcome to We and Light, the dedicated English medium channel for J and NEET aspirants. And you're watching the Dynamite series for all the J students who want to crack the exam with awesome super duper question. And in Dynamite series, I always get you one question, which is very exclusive, killer question with super duper concepts. And this will definitely blow your mind. Now, today's question is all about balancing. So you often would have taken a stick and tried to balance it or maybe you're trying to push something and you don't want it to fall so that, you know, there is no kind of rotational motion, only translational motion out there. So in today's question, you are going to see a very similar concept of balancing when you apply the forces and I'm going to make you find that angle in a very easy manner. So let's see the question, which is going to be on the screen right now. So you can see there is a force acting on this rod, which is making certain angle theta. This force is 5 mg by 2. It's applied at the bottom like shown. The rod is uniform, of course. The surface is rough, the bottom surface. The coefficient of friction is 0.5. And the question is, if the rod maintains the angle with the horizontal, then how much do you think the angle is? The question can also be framed in the other manner, meaning angle is given and then they ask you to find the force. So it doesn't matter as long as you know the procedure to solve the question. So let's begin. Since it is clearly mentioned that the angle is maintained, the meaning of this, the meaning of this statement is that the angle does not change and if theta does not change, that means it is in rotational, it is in rotational equilibrium, rotational equilibrium. And if it is having no rotation on there is rotational equilibrium, it also means that the net torque acting on the system is going to be zero. Only when there is torque, will there be any kind of rotational motion. If there is no net torque, then it will maintain its angle whichever it is making with the horizontal fair enough so let's start with the free body diagram because i know that there is torque involved in the question so obviously we should show the forces from their correct points else we will make some mistake so let's start with it obviously there is going to be some kind of a friction out here so i'm just going to put f and f will be a kinetic in nature because the rod will move do not forget that this rod is not stationary it is in motion and while it is translating, there is no rotation. So it's wrong to say that this point will be at rest. In fact, that point is moving. Hence, I should make it as kinetic friction. Next is Mg. Mg will always act from the center of mass. So this is your Mg force. Obviously, at this point of contact, there will be some kind of normal out there. So there will be also a normal reaction from the point of contact. And the result of all of this will be that this entire system will accelerate with some value A, which I do not know. All right, let's start writing down whatever we can write. First of all, in the Y direction, I can see that there is a normal force and there is Mg. So if I write the equations in Y direction, I will see that the normal force will be equal to Mg. Therefore, the kinetic friction, which is mu into N, will become mu times Mg but mu value is given to be 0.5. So hence, it's just going to be half mg. So that's the value of the kinetic friction, which we just figured out from the value of the normal. I think this much is clear. Okay, because there is no acceleration in the y direction. So hence, normal and mg should balance in the y axis. Now let's go to the x axis. Obviously, it is accelerating. If it is accelerating, that means the forces are definitely not balanced. So it is accelerating towards your right. So the forces on the right side are more than the forces on the left side. So this force and the frictional force will cancel to produce an unbalanced force to create this acceleration. So hence, I would say in the x direction, my external force minus the kinetic friction will be mass into acceleration. External force is 5 mg by 2. So I'm just going to put 5 mg by 2 here. Kinetic friction, I just found it out to be half mg is equal to ma. Now you can see MMM cancels from everywhere. 5 minus 1 is nothing but 4. So it will be 4G by 2 is equal to A. Therefore, A is equal to 2G. 
very interesting. I've figured out what is the value of the acceleration. But I'm still not close to the angle. And this is what you should realize whenever you're solving lengthy or tough or conceptual or critical questions that you will not generally get the answers in one step or two steps or even after applying two, three equations. You need to think beyond whatever you have done. So let's see what else we can do. Well, I have not yet touched much on the rotational aspect. So I think we should go with the torque. So I need to measure the torque about some point. Remember the total torque is zero. So now I have options. About which point do you want to measure the torque? I can measure it about this point or this point or any other point. But usually choose a convenient point to measure the torque because see, I, I'm saying that it is in rotational equilibrium, meaning that it will not move. So it doesn't matter whether I take this point, that point or that point, any point is going to give you zero torque. But I have to choose a point which is convenient for me. Now, most of you will go for either this point or this point, which is fairly good. But there is one catch in the problem. That's why it is in dynamite series. See, when I say it is in rotational equilibrium, it means that if you move with the rod, if you are in motion with the rod, the rod will appear to be at rest. Not from outside. Because from outside, the rod is actually moving. It's translating. Do not forget that. So I need to move with the rod. That means I need to be in a accelerated frame, basically a non-inertial frame of reference. I need to accelerate with it. Then I will see that, yes, the rod is at rest. The net torque is zero. So if I'm moving with the rod and it's a non-inertial frame, what will come? Pseudo force, right? So there should be a pseudo force exactly backwards because if you move with the rod, acceleration of the frame is front. So the pseudo force will act behind and the magnitude of this pseudo force will be mass of the rod into acceleration of the frame. The acceleration of the frame, I figured it out to be 2G. Hence, the value of the pseudo force will come out to be 2Mg. So that's the value of the pseudo force. Great, I figured out the pseudo force as well. I'm going to need it now. So how about taking the torque about this point and seeing what will the final answer come out to be? So I'm measuring the torque about this point. The value of the torque by this capital F will be zero because the force is passing through that point. When R cross F is calculated and R is going to be zero, R cross F will also be zero. Same story for friction as well because the friction passes through the point, R will be zero, hence R cross F or the torque will be zero. And the same story also applies for the normal. So force, normal and kinetic friction, all of them, all of them are going to give you zero torque. Okay, so I think I had put up Fk is equal to mu into n. I'll just put it up over here again. Okay, now the only two forces which will generate torque are mg and this pseudo force. That's it. Because these two forces are at certain distance from this point. And I think I can measure the distance as well. You just have to drop perpendiculars. If you notice, this is the perpendicular for mg and this is the perpendicular for the pseudo force. This distance, of course, is L by 2. The total length is L. This is the center of mass. So hence, this will be L by 2. If that is L by 2, obviously, this distance will be L by 2 is cos theta. So this will be L by 2 cos theta and this height this height will be L by 2 sine theta. You can see that this will be L by 2 sine of theta. I am going to need it for the torque calculation. So now you know why this problem has actually come in dynamite series. So let's start with the equations now. So torque by force, friction and normal is zero. Don't even bother about it. So if you want, I'll just mention it. Torque by force, torque by normal and the torque by frictional force is zero. So the torque by the gravity is clockwise. So the torque by mg is going to be clockwise. This will be balanced by the torque of the pseudo force, which will be anti-clockwise. Keep in mind, pseudo force always acts from the center of mass. That's the reason why I have shown this arrow mark from here. A lot of people do not know or get confused over there. Okay, so always remember pseudo force acts from the center of mass of that system, just like gravity. Okay, so now moving ahead, the torque of gravity 
will be L by 2 cos theta into mg. So it will be L by 2 cos theta into mg R into F. R is this distance. This is the force. The torque of the pseudo force will be this distance into the force, which is nothing but L by 2 sine theta into the pseudo force, of course, which is nothing but 2 times of mg. L by 2, L by 2 cancels, mg, mg cancels, sin theta is here, cos theta is here, so bring the cos theta down, so bring the cos theta down and bring the 2 on the other side. So you will get 1 by 2 is equal to sin theta by cos theta. Now what is sin by cos? Obviously it is tan of theta, correct? It is nothing but tan of theta, so I will get tan of theta is equal to half, that means theta is equal to tan inverse of half and that is our final result. It's a beautiful question. We started off by analyzing that if it is not rotating, it's in, trans it's in rotational equilibrium, but it could be translating with some acceleration. So we started by drawing the free body diagram. Then we applied Newton's laws in the y direction and the x direction to figure out some more variables like acceleration, friction, and then I realized that since it is in rotational equilibrium, I should be moving with the rod. And when I'm in motion, I'm a non-inertial frame. So there must be a pseudo force. And then taking into account the torques of everything, I applied the equations of torque. Also, I chose a beautiful point out here so that I do not have to calculate in a very tedious manner because the force normal and the kinetic friction will not generate any torque. So that's why I have chosen this point. And then I found out the answer to be tan inverse by two, tan inverse of half. Now, let me also tell you that even if you chose this point to measure the total torque and balance it out, still you would get the same answer. The only difference being that normal friction and this force will now create torque and the pseudo force and weight will not create torque. And the final answer won't change. Even if you take this point, then you will have even more forces, but just that your calculations will become more tedious. So always remember to choose a convenient point for the calculation. Usually it's that point where most of the forces meet at a singular point where all the forces are concurrent. I hope you guys have learned a lot through this question. Tan inverse half was the answer and more questions like this in your NEET crash course as well as your JE crash course. I am also teaching on the uh, crash course, especially the physics part out there. And you will have all the awesome teachers for all the three subjects. Most of the teachers, you already know them. Make sure you check out the link which is there in the description box. The crash course is in English and it will have all the interactive classes with recordings, with PDFs, assignments, as well as test series. And you will be able to compare your ranks with All India ranks and you can predict where your score is, where your rank is and plan your steps accordingly. The report cards are beautiful. The assignments are the assignments curated exactly just for the last few days or the last few weeks before the final run up to the, you know, uh, examinations. So make sure you solve all these assignments. The link is there in the description box. Prices are also very discounted, very nominal fees. You will see that when you apply my coupon code as well, SHHPRO. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the session. Do not forget to smash the like button as well as hit the subscribe button so that you can stay tuned for more such amazing videos. This was Captain Shreya signing off. Hasta la vista.